Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, this is Azamon Gadal fan here, and it looks like it's commentary time once again. Today's commentary is going to be on a video by Cracked and why they think the makeup and food industry are killing you. You know, once upon a time, I used to like Cracked's content. Whenever I got bored, I'd visit their site, read an article or two, and maybe watch a video. Their content was flawed, yes, but I still found it entertaining. However, Cracked has been kind of on a downward spiral in terms of quality, and I think this video was some of the worst content they put out as of late. So, what could be so bad about this video? Well, let's stop beating around the bush and find out. Hey guys, I'm here today to talk to you about the kooky way the United States regulates chemicals in the everyday products that we use, such as makeup. Mainly that they don't. Yeah, except that they technically do, but yeah, I guess we'll just forget about that. But it isn't like this in other countries. See, the EU adheres to something called the precautionary principle. And what exactly is the precautionary principle? Great question, Katie. You are smart and valuable and you ask great questions. Other than being a perfect example of why we should all move to Europe, the precautionary principle is the principle that the introduction of a new product or process whose ultimate effects are disputed or unknown should be resisted. But essentially, they are cautious. If the effects of something are unknown, they say no. If data is inconclusive, they ask for more data. The United States, however, operates under a high proof of harm. In other words, they require significant evidence that something is detrimental to the environment and the population in order to ban it. So, if I understand this correctly, you're implying that America's high proof of harm system isn't cautious because it's not cautious in a specific way. Look, I'm not gonna act like the high proof of harm system is perfect, but if you think that the precautionary principle is any better, well, I'm sorry to say that doesn't seem to be the case because you see this screenshot here? These are just a few of the many problems with the precautionary principle. Ready to have your mind blown? The United States has not passed a federal law to regulate the ingredients used in personal care products since 1938. Oh, Beauty Counter! Yeah, you know, that company that's unaccredited by the Better Business Bureau? Not only that, but while they do have a resources and learn more section, the sources that even remotely have to do with the claims on their Our Story page are extremely dubious to say the least. Remember, just because the source you're using is in Wikipedia doesn't mean that the source can't be questionable. Meanwhile, the American public unknowingly smears, breathes, drinks, and eats poison literally every day. Take those notorious tricksters red dye number 40, yellow dye number 5, and yellow dye number 6. In 2007, scientists concluded that eating artificial food dye was bad for you. Go figure. Specifically, that they caused hyperactivity in children and have also been linked to cancer. You know, those two diseases that are a total bummer and everyone hates and are a big problem here in the United States of America. So, while in the UK the study was enough to ban dyes as food additives, the United States was all like, Oh, yeah? But, nah, we're good. Yeah, here's the thing about that. You see, when you take a bit of a closer look, you'll notice that there are quite a few major issues with the study you cited. For one thing, they gave the test subjects mixtures of various food dyes, making it hard to tell which exact food dyes are supposedly causing the problem. So if that's the case, how do we really know if the dyes you mentioned are truly causing kids to become hyperactive? Not only that, but even the European Food Safety Authority Journal said that the study provided LIMITED EVIDENCE AT BEST! But you want to know what the strangest part about this whole segment is? She makes no attempt to back up her claim about how food dyes are linked to cancer. That's right, no screenshot, no link to the source where she got it from. Hell, she doesn't even do both like she has been doing throughout the video thus far. So if you can provide evidence to back up both your hyperactivity claim and UK ban claim, why can't you do the same with the cancer claim? Oh, and if you're looking for the source in the video description, yeah, good luck. Cause it ain't there. And you know that old saying, if it's not a dye, it's a preservative. Well, that is exclusively relevant here. Take a look at this label from a box of Rice Krispies. What exactly is BHT? Well, BHT is a synthetic compound, which is commonly used to preserve foods and cosmetics, and also can be found in jet fuels, rubber, petroleum products, and in bombing fluid. However, perhaps its most distinguished feature is that it should not be allowed to enter the environment because it is a known carcinogen that can cause liver damage. Just because BHT is found in those products doesn't mean that BHT itself is as harmful as those products. I mean, going by your logic, water is found in hydrofluoric acid, therefore water itself is dangerous to consume. Also, according to the International Agency for Research on Cancer, which is part of the World Health Organization, BHT is classified under Group 3 of their carcinogen classification system, meaning that it is unclassifiable as to its carcinogenity in humans. In other words, there is no 
evidence at the moment to prove that it causes cancer in humans. So, with that said, I guess BHT isn't the known carcinogen that you make it out to be, now is it? Now, BHT is not to be confused with the bovine growth hormones BGH or BST, the toxic spawn of Monsanto, which was somehow approved by the FDA in 1993, <laughs> even though that shit ain't good for us or the cows. Yeah. Growth hormones have been linked to breast and prostate cancer, thyroid disease, diabetes, obesity, infertility, asthma, allergies. So, you know, that sucks. You know, here's an idea. How about actually have what you're showing us match up with what you're telling us? Because I'm looking at the screenshot right now, and from what I see, they're talking about hormone disruptors. Specifically, pesticides, Teflon chemicals, plasticizers, and food contaminants. Guess what's not explicitly listed? That's right, growth hormones. Now, granted, they do mention growth hormones earlier in the article, but even then, that doesn't automatically mean they're specifically talking about that in this part of the article you showed, so this screenshot does diddly squat to back up your claim. Continue to educate yourself. Check out websites such as the Environmental Working Group, which tries to sell you a product even when they themselves have rated the product as dangerous. Not only that, but they give ratings to products using their danger scale even when there is little to no data to justify said rating. Or check out documentaries such as Fed Up, which has been criticized for getting a whole slew of facts wrong and wrongfully blamed sugar for causing the obesity the epidemic, especially when claiming that it was responsible for doubling the prevalence of obesity in America between 1971 and 2000. Forks over knives, which has been noted for using evidence such as the China study to support one of its major claims, even when said study is highly questionable. And the human experiment, which relies way more on personal anecdotes to support its claims about how chemicals cause certain health problems, rather than legitimate scientific evidence. And since there really isn't much for me to talk about after this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into my final thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, out of the six years that I've been a commentator, this has got to be hands down, no joke, one of the worst videos I've commentated on to date. I'm sorry, but it really is that bad. I think one of my major issues with it is that when it tries to educate the viewers, it just falls flat on its face, especially when it comes to fact checking. And considering that the educational aspect plays a major role in the video, that's really saying something. In other words, if a major part of your video doesn't work, then you need to go back and seriously retool it. Now, if I had to point out at least one element in the video that was kind of good, it would be the comedy, but even that's a bit of a stretch. The best way I can describe it is that it's not awful, but it's not anything that spectacular either. Which is surprising since this video came from Cracked, who's a comedy website, so with that in mind, you'd think that they bring a bit more of their A-game when it comes to this aspect. And that's pretty much all I gotta say about the video, so until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Ozamanga Dao Fans, signing off.